This is a video on the synthesis of nucleotides. In the main purpose of this video is to look at the nuances of how exactly the five different types of nucleotides are synthesized. Let us begin with something which, we, which is we are at a common, common platform. So nucleotides, as you know that they were discovered by Alexander Todd. He won a Nobel Prize for the discovery of nucleotides. Now, the nucleotides, depending on the size of the nucleotides, they are put in two categories, two groups. One is what we call either purines and the other one is called pyrimidines. So the purines, we know there are two purines. One is called adenine, other one is guanine. Uh, pyrimidines, there are three of them. One is uh, thymine, uracil, and cytosine. So these are the uh, these are the five different bases. We also know that these bases, if you add a sh sugar molecule to any of these, if you add a sugar. It can be a ribose sugar or a deoxyribose sugar, you will get a nucleoside. If the names of the nucleosides are important. So a nucleoside of adenine is called adenosine. This is guanosine. Thymine is the nucleoside is called thymidine, uridine, and cytidine. You attach a phosphate group to the ribose sugar you will get a nucleotide. The nucleotide of adenine is called adenylate, guanylate, thymidylate, uridylate and cytidylate. So these are the, the fundamental names, that fundamental concept that we need to know about naming of nucleotides. If you look at the nucleotides, they have varieties of functions to perform in our body. You would have come across to them as uh, energy giving molecules in varieties of functions for example can be muscle contraction iron transport in all these they are the energy giving function is carried out by nucleotides they are acting as uh, you know in the building blocks of nucleic acid they are acting as activated intermediates you will find them in the uh, in the synthesis of uh, certain carbohydrates udp glucose you will find the CDP acting in the fatty acids or in the phospholipid synthesis. You will find them in signal transcription. For example, like cyclic AMB. They can also be, you know, allosteric molecules. ADP, ATP, all these can be allosteric molecules. Some of them are coenzymes. For example, components of the coenzymes like NAD, NADP, FMN, FAD, uh, then coenzyme A, all these or bioptering, tetrahydrobiopterin, in all these nucleotides play a very, very important role. And in the synthesis of nucleotides, nucleotides are very interesting. When you look at the synthesis of purines, purines are synthesized with a starting material, and the starting material is ribose. So, based on the starting materials, the purines are synthesized. What about pyrimidines? Pyrimidines are, you don't need a starting material, you need, you know, a carbon donor, a nitrogen donor, and these molecules are synthesized. We are well aware of the structures of these purines and pyrimidines. In the uh, most important elements in these purines and pyrimidines are nothing but nitrogen and carbon. And these nitrogens and carbons, if the contributors of these nitrogens and carbons are certain amino acids. Amino acids like uh, aspartate is an amino acid which can contribute nitrogen or a carbon in a roundabout way. Or uh, a glutamate, a glutamine. Then there is uh, glycine and also serine. Serine can contribute towards being part of the um, amine, uh, the, the uh, aminopterin molecule and in that way it will form part of the tetrahydrofolate. So these amino acids can contribute towards 
carbon and nitrogen of nucleotides another source is this is the first one the second source is your carbon dioxide itself it can contribute the carbon of a, a nucleotide and a third carbon donor is what we call it uh, the n10 formal tetrahydrofolate so these are this is a one carbon donor these are the starting material from which a nucleotide is synthesized when we look at the nucleotide synthesis um, especially let us begin with the purine synthesis when we look at the purine synthesis purine synthesis ends or it has it comes to an, a stance it comes to a stage where enose enose monophosphate is synthesized so that in the first step first phase of synthesizing purines is synthesizing uh, enosin monophosphate enosin monophosphate is not abundantly present in a cell but from here there is a diversion happening whether it is amp that is synthesized or a gmp molecule which is synthesized a crucial step therefore you will also realize that these synthetic reactions are very highly regulated highly regulated at the enzyme level as well as at the energy level synthesizing inositol mono inosin sorry inosin monophosphate requires one mole of inosin monophosphate synthesis requires about 6 moles of atp huge energy investment is required in synthesizing this so at the energy level you can control then there are about four crucial enzymes which will regulate in the synthesis of the nucleotides why is this regulation important is because if the concentration of adenylate has to match with the concentration of the guanylate or with the thymidylate if this concentration there is a variation in the concentration if the if it is beyond the requirement of a cell what will happen is it will uh, wrongly get incorporated into dna molecules therefore there is a chance of having mutations in genetic material so in order to avoid that there is a very very strict the stringent regulation of synthesis of nucleotides nucleotides can be synthesized in almost every cell it is possible to synthesize nucleotides um, let us begin with the purine nucleotide synthesis purine nucleotide synthesis is, uh, is can be synthesized in every cell that is known as the de novo pathway a latin word de novo pathway means starting from scratch starting from very beginning using those those molecules that we have seen a little while ago amino acid carbon dioxide tetrahydrofolate etc that is de novo synthesis but look at organs like okay brain or the rbcs they are unable to have a de novo synthesis of nucleotides they have a different pathway so therefore this is the type one type of synthesis their pathway is what we call a salvage pathway a salvage pathway means it is synthesizing nucleotides from in the you know in the, in the broken molecules it is used the broken mole in broken nucleotides are used or nuclear bases are used in order to synthesize nucleotides for the requirement of a cell for synthesizing dna molecules that is known as in the salvage pathway let us begin to understand if the de novo pathway for purine synthesis let us begin to understand it is a long step a long pathway with about 10 different steps 10 steps are involved let us understand each of these steps and how these rings are formed before we uh, begin uh, one important thing is um, uh, let us look at the, this is a kind of a structure of a purine now if you look at the purine this is there are, it has got two rings 
whereas a pyrimidine will have only a single ring. Pyrimidine will have a single ring, purines will have two rings. Now, this is an imidazole ring. What is important is numbering of the nitrogen or, or the atoms. Numbering is important. You can see if the numbering begins from here. And the numbering, this is nitrogen 1, carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This portion, it is an anti-clockwise way we number them, which is important. And it is also important where do we write the number. We write the number inside the ring. Okay, that is important. So, why we write it inside the ring? Because when we construct a molecule of a nucleotide, it will have a ribose sugar attached at the ninth position. Ribose also will have number 1, 2, 3, 4. To differentiate if the numbering in sugar from a base, we write the number inside in the case of a base. In the case of a sugar, we will write the number outside. Not only we write, it, write the number outside, we will put a prime sign. One prime, now you can recollect. 3 prime or 5 prime which we use that is about in the sugar molecule this theme will be repeated as we are naming the intermediates in purine synthesis uh, this we are we will be referring every now and then in order to understand what is the source of let's say this nitrogen or this carbon this nitrogen this carbon nitrogen or this nitrogen what is the source of it Remember that. In this connection, let us also look at in the numbering mechanism in a pyrimidine ring structure. We start numbering from here. It is in the clockwise direction. Number 1, 2, 3, 4. It is in this direction. Numbering is done. Ribose sugar will be attached to nitrogen 1 here. And ribose sugar will be attached to nitrogen N in the case of a purine molecule. Let us try to understand how a puree is synthesized.